Hey everyone, welcome back to my off-grid property. It is a cold winter's day and I finally got some time to take care of a project that I've been wanting to take care of for some time now. Today we're going to be installing a diesel-powered heater in my shipping container here. I mainly use this shipping container for storage, but with a little bit of heat it will make a nice additional workspace in the winter time, so I'm looking forward to that. I've seen people use these diesel heaters for all kinds of things, heating small cabins, sheds, tents, and even heating their overlanding rigs. So I'm excited to see what it's going to do. Come along with me today as we get this installed. This particular diesel heater is made by a company called Vivor, and I'll leave links to it down in the description below. But this is their 8 kilowatt all-in-one model. It runs off of 12 volts, so it should tie right into the solar-powered charging station that I have out here in the container. It is nice and compact. It has the diesel tank built in, so it should work great for what we're trying to do out here. So stick around for the full installation and test. Here's what came in the box. We have the diesel powered heater itself, a box full of accessories. This is our intake and exhaust pipes, as well as our heat vent pipe. I think these are the caps for the heat vent that allow you to point it different directions. And then of course our owner's manual. It's time to mount the heater. The instructions show that the exhaust should be two inches up off the floor because of the excessive heat that it puts off. So I've cut some blocks to go under there and we're gonna go ahead and mount the heater to the blocks. All right, we'll get this flipped over and get the intake and exhaust pipes mounted. I double checked the manual, but this is the exhaust and this is the intake. The exhaust does have an arrow pointing out, so that makes it easy to tell which one that it is. So we'll go ahead and mount our exhaust pipe. Tighten it through this slot here on the side. And then our intake. Kind of tight quarters in here, but that'll do there. So we'll set this up out of the way and we're going to bend this exhaust pipe down. It's aluminum, it'll bend pretty easily, but you still want to be careful that you don't overbend it. And we'll bend that so that it goes out our wall. We want our heat face in the back of the container um, so that it's distributing the heat towards the back uh, because we're putting this up in the front of the container. One thing that the manual does say is that the exhaust should never slope up, so we'll be careful of that when we poke it out the wall. So we'll go ahead and leave that bent there, and then let's move on to our wiring while we got it up here on the workbench. The heater comes with a nice set of fused wires, so we'll get those stripped and install some ring connectors so we can connect it directly to the battery. So we got those ring connectors all installed. So I moved the table out of the way for this next part. We're going to go ahead and line up the heater, figure out where our exhaust is going to go, and get that hole drilled. So 
So the heater comes with this exhaust sleeve that we're going to put on next. That helps protect it from any of the surfaces around it. Go ahead and line that up with the hole. I'm going to install it right about there. The hole was a little bit big, but that was the only hole saw I had up here, so that's what we went with. I have this exhaust system joint and crack sealant that we're going to go ahead and seal the hole with. Now let's fill it with a little bit of diesel fuel. I recommend on small appliances like this where you can't have any overflow um, that you use a, either a funnel and a small jug or you can use one of these fuel pumps. These little fuel pumps are nice because this will be allow me to reach in under the table and fill the tank. So we'll just tuck that in there, turn that on. I'm not going to fill it quite full because we're testing it out, so we'll just see how it does. Allow that fuel to drain back in there. Now we just got to wire it up and we'll be ready to test it out. I've got it all hooked up to my little solar powered charging station out here in the container. So we're powered up, we're fueled up, we're ready to go. I double checked the instructions to make sure we're installed per the instructions and this is how it shows that it's supposed to be installed. Now one of the things that I've seen different opinions on is that air intake right there. Today we're installing it the way the instructions show but there are a lot of people that are of the opinion that that air intake should also be installed to the outside. And that makes sense to me. It's my understanding that this air intake is the air intake for the combustion chamber. So if it was pulling in denser air, it may run a little more efficiently. It's not the air going into the intake that is actually being heated. That comes in from the back of the heater and is blown out the front. So if that's something that you think that I should do, please leave it down in the comments. And let's get this thing fired up. So the instructions say that we just have to hit the power button. The up and down adjust the settings on for the heat of the diesel heater. It says to go ahead and power it on and to wait three to five minutes as it primes itself and gets it ready to go. So let's give it a shot. Start The pump's starting, you can hear that clicking, and I can hear the fan winding up. So we'll wait a second here and see if it starts blowing some heat. It took a little bit more than five minutes, I think, but the manual does say to be patient. So now it's blowing some hot air. I'm gonna close this place up and uh, see how fast it warms up. We're gonna come back in a half hour and see what our temperature's at for a reference point. We are currently at 31 degrees. We'll come back in a half hour and see where we're at. Here's our little exhaust pipe running out the side. It's nice and quiet. It's been about a half an hour and it's already raised the temperature about 16 degrees and it's just gonna get warmer from here. Put your hand out in front of there and it's almost too hot to leave it there. It's really cranking out some hot air, doing a great job heating this space. It comes with a little remote for the on and off so that you don't have to climb under the table to turn it on. That's going to be handy. I'll leave this right up on the workbench so I can just fire this thing up with the push of a button. This little heater seems to be working great. It's doing the job it was made to do and seems to be performing well. I might even consider installing one of these in my cabin in the future for a little bit of supplemental heat so I don't have to get up in the middle of the night to feed the fire. But we'll do a good long-term test on it here first. 
Well, that's it for installing a diesel-powered heater here in my off-grid shipping container. Thanks for joining me today. This little heater seems to be working well and keeping this place toasty warm. If you enjoyed this video and found this information helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have questions, please leave them down in the comments. And for future projects and adventures, please subscribe. And thank you for watching.